Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this uh, September Development Committee. For the, we only have one gentleman from public with us, but nice to see you. Hello. Uh, my name's Pauline Grove Jones, and I am the chair of this committee. And sitting in front of me are the members who will make decisions. Um, and either side of me are the officers who are attending today. On my left, if you could introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Jeff Lyon. I'm the Development and Major Projects Manager. Good morning. I'm Lauren Gregory. I'm Democratic Services Officer. Good morning. I'm Fiona Croxton, Solicitor for the Council on Planning Matters. It's the little man, Anna. Oh. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Andreas Yassimi, a district councillor, and I love Cromer. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Anna, just that's it. If you good can. morning. My name is Anna Nash, and I'm one of the planning officers. <laughs> Thank you for that um, unexpected. Um, it is. It's just extraordinary. Anyway. Are there any apologies for absence, Lauren? Thank you, Chairman. Apologies for absence have been received from Councillor Varley. Uh, with Councillor Toy substituting, right. I'll go for the next item as well. Thank you. Um, if you can now turn to your agenda for the minutes. Um, oh, before we go to that, I must just say, if, if you hear the fire alarm go off, Mr. Barber, that's real. So head for the doors in a restrained but swift manner and down the stairs, front or back of the building, but please don't use the lift. And uh, please turn your mobile phones off, all of you who've got mobile phones. It's usually the members are the ones who they start. Um, I can remember the crowing cock. Can you remember that one? Yeah. Uh, let me think. Oh, dear. And uh, there are facilities in the lobby, if you require them. Right, so we'll now go on to the minutes. If you turn to your agenda, I'm just going to make an assumption that you have looked at them. Are there any corrections? Yes, so Councillor Holliday. On page four, we discussed the use of smart class and whether that would be made a condition of the 3073, I think is the number. Um, and we've had some correspondence, Jeff and I, and it has in fact been made a condition, though that isn't clear on the minutes, but the use of the glazing will have to be approved by NNDC. Is that not correct, Jeff? It's not cited here. Yeah, it may, it may not be cited in the minutes, but so it's been covered off in, in the officers' actions post committee, so that's been secured by condition. Thank you. Anything else? Anybody else? Yes. It's not just the minutes, it's just the, the pagination on the agenda was incorrect. Uh, oh, look right. through. What, the whole agenda? Yeah, well, it's, the pagination is incorrect. Oops. Minutes should be 1 to 9, declaration of interest should be 9 to 12, officer report should be 13 to 20, and then a the second one, 21 to 24. Thank you, Richie. Right. So can I have uh, someone to propose we approve these minutes? Richard Kirsch, Councillor Kershaw, Councillor Brand, second. All those in favour? Yep. Any items of urgent business? Lauren? There are none, Chairman. Uh, the order of business will be as it stands. Um, the declarations of interest, anybody, any particular interest with Trunch or with Almerton? No, nope. thank you. So we're now goes to the officer's reports. Um, Jane. Oh, hey. it's you. It's me, I'm Gosh, Jane. I never said, I knew that's how much you've changed. In such a short space of time. <laughs> we do allow our officers annual leave, so I'm covering James. Yes, I think that's the script. Oh, no, <laughs> I don't, obviously. No. Absolutely. So, Trunch PF 213330, page 17. 
Right. The office to learn is to present. Okay, so um, so this is an application for full planning permission uh, for the erection of three single storey dwellings and access drive. It's page 13, actually. Yeah, it's, yeah, gender item eight, page 13. So the principle of development uh, for up to three dwellings was established by the grant and outline permission that's so listed in your case history, reference PO 22005. So that also approved the means of access into the site. So this is a, it's a full application for three to three dwellings. As you'll see on the on the report, uh, Trunch Parish Council have objected, and their sort of position is set out on page fourteen of the report. And um, representative from Trunch Parish Council is here to speak today. In terms of a consultees, we've had no objections raised from the Highway Authority or from the council's landscape officer. We've also had four letters of support submitted uh, for the application. So I've set out the main issues at the top of page 16 of the report. So the principal access, design and appearance, landscape amenity, and environmental considerations. As you'll see through the report, officers have no objections to the proposal. In terms of the principle, the principle so having been established via the outline permission, although it amounts to a departure, there are material consider considerations that would warrant uh, approval. I'll just touch briefly on nutrient neutrality. Uh, if you see pages 18 and 19 of the report. So this is a development that lies within the Natural England catchment map. Um, so that's been identified. However, the applicant working with Angling Water has, has identified that this scheme actually drains outside of the catchment. So it goes to a wastewater treatment works uh, that then disposes to into the sea. So it's not actually going into the catchment where the nutrient neutrality concerns are. So having had that confirmed from Anglia Water, um, we, we don't believe this is going to have a, an issue in terms of nutrient pollution from foul flows going into the site. Um, so we, we're confident we can um, undertake our assessment of the habitats regs and conclude there's no sort of uh, significant effect. Um, so, so yeah, so I've set those position out on page 18 and 19 of the report on that. So in terms of conclusion, so we're, we're sort of broadly satisfied that the design and appearance of the scheme is acceptable, generally in keeping with the surrounding area, and each dwelling is provided with an acceptable level of amenity space. Uh, so the means of access have been accepted previously, and we've had no objections from the Highway Authority. Uh, and whilst I say, what a principle, it would amount to a departure, the previous permission was granted and we've weighed that in the balance and we feel that the recommendation to you is one of approval as set out on page 19 and 20 of the report. Now I'm going to suggest two additional conditions and these are linked to nutrient neutrality. Now the applicant has stated that this won't be draining into the um, foul flows that go into, into the board's SAC. However, we need to make sure that does actually happen because if it does drain into the board's SAC, then that would involve a nutrient neutrality issue to be needing to be addressed. So I'm going to suggest a condition that requires the applicant at the point that they're about to start to confirm that it actually is going to drain outside of the catchment. So that's, so that's sort of covering that point off. Also, I'm going to suggest a condition just to finalize the surface water drainage details. So we've got clarity exactly how surface water is going to be dealt with because that's a another subset of nutrient neutrality. Although for this scale of development, for three dwellings, it's quite modest in terms of the impact from, from surface water flows, but I just want to make sure we've covered that off uh, as part of our, as we are the competent authority under the habitat regs, we just make, need to make sure we're doing that job properly. Um, so that's, that, that's all, Chairman, so back to you. Thank you. Um, I now go to uh, parish representative, um, Mrs. Wilson, if you'd like to come up, Jane. I'm sure you know how these things work, don't you? Oh, no, no, well, just push the little man, as they say. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Clark to Trunch Parish Council, and I've been asked to come through today to, just to read a statement out. Um, the Parish Council wishes to continue to raise their concerns for this proposal. It accepts that this new proposal attempts to meet all the objections made from previous applications, but the Parish Council notes that when rejecting the previous 
proposal, North Norfolk District Council mentioned that it might make a different view on an application if it was for two dwellings. And we continue to, con to feel that two dwellings would be right. For the same reason that Greg Heyman, Councillor Greg Heyman has called this in for the Development Committee to review, the Parish Council still have concerns on the same material considerations. Loss of light and amenity to neighbours, overdevelopment and the size of development in a rural village, highway safety has always been a main consideration and has always been one of the main concerns for the Parish Council. Although the new proposal goes a long way to meet the previous objections about access for emergency vehicles and general accents into Chapel Road, it believes that with three dwellings on this site, there will still be significant access problems. And taken with other developments, three new dwellings would lead to unacceptable traffic problems in Chapel Road. In addition to these practical objections, there is also the issue of general principle, which has remained a concern for the Parish Council. These define that residential developments within the defined countryside policy area will not be permitted. Trunch is not one of the selected settlement sites listed in policy SS1, and therefore it is defined as countryside and is contrary to the current adopted policies and is not permitted. Finally, if North Norfolk District Council did decide to con give consent to the application, contrary to the adopted planning policies and other prevailing issues, the Parish Council would not wish this to set a precedent for further developments of this nature in the village. The Parish Council would also ask that if planning approval is given, that strict conditions as per the recommendations are added, with a clear understanding that enlargement, alterations and addition to dwellings are removed from permitted development rights. Thank you. If you'd like to return to your seat. We have no objecting uh, speaker, but we do have a supporting speaker, Mr. Barber, if you'd like to come to the front here. Uh, the face, the little face there. It's the second one in. <laughs> Does help sometimes, doesn't it? You have three minutes from the time you start speaking, Mr. Barbet. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, Madam Chairman and members of the committee. And, and thank you for taking the time to consider this application, which I'm delighted has been before you today with a very clear recommendation for approval based on an extremely thorough and carefully considered examination by your planning department and statutory consultees, which, as you've heard, has all been clearly laid out in the officer's report. Uh, which I, of course, wholeheartedly agree with and encourage you to do the same. I would very briefly like to address two received objections. Simply note that these sensibly repeat those raised at the outline application stage, which were subsequently dismissed by you in approving that application. Although I'm always very pleased to see consistency, things move on and arguments become boot where they've been superseded by events, which is clearly the case here, given that the principle for development of three dwellings has been established. The proposal before you today has been very carefully and thoughtfully designed to offer a contemporary interpretation of vernacular style, and I contend it responds extremely well to its immediate context and the character of the area, providing a much needed, high quality, low level, low density development on unused scrub land that is surrounded by housing and is pretty much unfit for any other purpose. Not only does the proposal adhere to the North Norfolk Design Guide, including greatly exceeding amenity requirements, but it has also received strong and unequivocal local support from the properties immediately to the west and east of the application site, together with that opposite new entrance. In other words, those which would be most affected by anything substandard. The proposed bungalows do not overlook any other properties and provide a very high standard of accommodation. Additionally, to assure the ongoing health and to minimise garden shading, the trees along the western boundary are, for the first time ever, to be properly maintained by having their crowns lifted and encroaching branches cut back towards the fence line, and that's all with agreement of their owner. As you would hope and expect, the applicants and I have continuously liaised with the adjoining properties, the case officer, and statutory consultees to assure that any suggestions or concerns they raise were suitably addressed. And the result being, as you've heard, 
is an application that's fully supported by your planning department, landscape officer, together with county highways. I sincerely hope you'll uphold the recommendation to approve this application. Thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barbeck. If you'd like to return to your seat, if we do have any questions, then I will um, ask you to reply. Now, this was brought to us by uh, Councillor Heyman. Have we had any information from Councillor Heyman? Is, if, has he sent in the report? I've not received any correspondence from Councillor Heyman on this matter. Yet again, we're going to say, if as a local member, you ask that a planning application is brought to this committee, then I expect, as do the officers and the members of the committee, that that member appears because it causes an awful lot of work for our officers. It's, it concerns us because we have to come in. And it is, it, uh, well, I'm going to say this, it's ill-mannered not to tip up. So that's it. We don't hear from Mr. Heyman. I'll go to members now. Does anybody wish to speak on this one? Yes. Councillor Heinrich. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And what we've got here is a site where the principle of development uh, has been established. So something is going to go there. We've heard some arguments against the development, but I don't think those really stand up to scrutiny. Technically, Trunch is countryside under current policy. But the reality is what we've got here are three properties infilling a large backlot site that are within the built up area of the village. And that village has services, shop, pub, there's an active village hall there, and it's easy access into North Walsham. Then the properties are bungalows, and there is a demand for bungalows. We have an aging population, and the bungalow is a very suitable form of, of uh, structure for them. I think the design is very satisfactory, and uh, the details provided in the uh, design statement show that they're going to be very, very sustainable and built to the highest stand environmental standards and uh, it's good to see that and i hope many more developers would try and reach those standards as well so there's one question is adding yet more foul uh, sewage flows uh, to the monthly treatment plant given uh, anglian waters somewhat uh, dubious record on discharges into the sea i would hope that uh, and i can't say that these three in particular would add anything serious to that it's more to do with the uh, uh, rainwater runoff over overflowing the, the, the sewage system there but uh, it's worth, worth, worth keeping in mind that uh, wherever discharges are concerned it might be the sea it might be into the rivers uh, rivers but it shouldn't be happening so uh, i think on balance yeah i support the application i'm happy to propose uh, exceptions to the recommendation i'm putting down this proposal then paul Councillor Brown. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just referring back to your remarks about you no know, submissions or appearance by a local member, perhaps we ought to add an additional item to our agendas to record instances where this happens for in future so that we keep a proper monitoring of the situation. It's very disappointing, I, I must say. Um, <clears throat> on this application, um, um, I'm quite nervous about this application, actually, um, in a number of respects. We've got a mention in the report on page 19 uh, in the section about nutrient neutrality that we have a, um, an opinion from um, Anglin Water uh, that this doesn't impact on nutrient neutrality via the applicant's agent. Um, I'd, I'd like to know if we've actually received uh, the evidence, either um, whatever was submitted to the agent, or if indeed we've queried this direct with Anglin Water, um, because it does cast doubt on, if you like, the, the scoping of the uh, catchment area by Natural England. They've obviously missed a trick at Natural England. Let's not, you know, mess about on that. 
but so we need to be quite certain about that the other thing that i would have liked to have seen because we are breaking new ground here making an exception in accepting this application in these times where we're constrained by central government measures on nutrient neutrality to have had uh, an opinion from natural england itself if that's if that's feasible um or uh, or, or appropriate um and the other thing that um andrew do you want us to answer those two first yep yeah, i'm quite happy because, yes um, um, let's get those out and then, then we'll go back to you yeah sure so as part of the processing application the agent communicated with the uh, officer about angley water and their position there's an email trail showing that angley water have confirmed that this doesn't go to treatment works that discharge into the into the broad sac so there's an email confirming that um that the case officer has um we haven't consulted natural england on this particular application the requirement for consulting is where we have to go through the appropriate assessment route. So NACLIN won't provide comments, just general comments on applications. It would only be on the basis of us doing an appropriate assessment. Um, so we've come to our view that the habitats regs, um, although it's in the catchment, we, our view is that it's not um, affected by foul flows. I've suggested the additional condition just to sort of add the belt and braces on that. Um, but so I, I, I understand the, we're in a, a slightly uncharted territory in some ways with uh, we're trying to find solutions to, to the to the issues that naturally are raised on the 16th of March. Now rural Haskoding are doing some work on the mapping. So they're looking at what was the mapping that naturally going to produce accurate are there sort of changes to the boundary. So that might actually take some places outside of the, the catchment map when rural Haskoding review that. So at the minute we're sort of in that sort of interim period where we haven't got the official rural Haskoding maps. But we're having to rely on evidence and the evidence we have is a letter from angry water confirming this doesn't discharge and to me that's enough to kind of rule out the the foul flow issue particularly do you want to carry on andrew and then, um... uh yes if, if i may um well thank you for for clarifying that um if you're confident that we um are protected if it stands up to scrutiny in the future so we don't know which way this is going to necessarily go then that's uh, that's fine and, and of course you did confirm you were adding the two the two conditions to um uh, make it absolutely clear to the applicant what uh, what is required um and just for the benefit of the tape i don't think we uh, under planning legislation owe any duty as an authority to regulate discharges into uh the sea um but it is a concern that we are in effect assisting um you know further discharges under license or otherwise um uh, by angling water uh, standing at 49 percent at the moment nationally so they are in particular breach um as a as a, a competent water authority we are actually um enabling that uh in a, in a sense but we perhaps have no choice because we have to uh, deal with this application. The other thing that I wanted to raise was that um, on the landscape officer, um, the previous landscape officer back on the application in 2005 was really concerned that several trees had been cleared from the site and was of the opinion that no amount of planting would redress the uh, imbalance caused by that clearance to the natural habitat, to the biodiversity, uh, etc um are we happy that there's sufficient biodiv biodiversity net gain on this in in in, in those terms because the, the issue here is with two bungalows rather than three you would have more scope to uh, improve biodiversity and um reinstate the vegetation that was uh removed um all those years ago so that's just a question that i i had before I make up uh, my mind on it. I mean, in terms of the landscape, I mean, in terms of biodiversity net gain, that I mean, that's not actually into law yet as a as a, as a legal requirement. So, I mean, case law basically said one percent is 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 the net yeah. gain from, the, yeah. from that perspective. So, yeah, yeah. It's, so, it for is. as a decision makers, we're not we, we we have no legal basis to ask for the ten percent net gain at this stage. Obviously, hopefully, that will come into fruition at some point. Um, but in terms of the, the landscape, landscape officers take looked at the scheme and they've come to review and they they they're content. 
the proposal meets the, the relevant policies. So EN2 and that, that those are the relevant policies. So on that basis, we have no reason to, to object to the proposal in the absence of a, an objection from the landscape. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, Councillor Holliday. Thank you, Chair. I mean, I echo the concerns about the sewage flow, and I'd like to know how many um, effluents um, discharges have occurred from Monday um, in terms, I, I can't remember the numbers, I didn't look at them, but do you remember Anglia Water were telling us how many times they'd overflowed into their various rivers and seas, and I'd like to know how many occurrences there were before. I, I'm not really comfortable with that, without more data. Um, there's a lot of asphalt here, and I know it's permeable, but I, is permeable asphalt really permeable when you get the sort of rains that we get nowadays? I like to see that running down into the um, outflow um, tracks and into the sewage works. If density seems very tight, I know the outline was for three buildings, but it seems much greater footprints than I expected in comparison with the um, properties on the east. And I have a concern about the amount of glazing on the west um, aspects, and I wondered if that could be conditioned to be smart glass, please. Thank you. Amazing. Just one moment, Victoria, just want to check that. <laughs> well, you're looking at that. Where, where's this sound that we're using? That? Okay, I mean, there isn't looking at the list of conditions the officers recommended. Um, obviously, in addition to the two that I've suggested, in addition, um, we're removing permits, suggesting removing permitted development rights, but there isn't a requirement for a glazing scheme. So, if, I mean, if the committee felt that was important to, to take it over, over the line for approval, then of course we can add conditions requiring any sort of glazing details of glazing to be fitted. Um, so, perfectly, ha um, it, that, that to me what doesn't present a, a an issue in terms of adding those conditions. But just touching on the Anglo water point, I think we need to be careful that we're not drawn into matters that are outside of our control mm -hmm. as a local planning authority. We're, we're talking about a scheme that would discharge to, to the Munsey treatment works, and that would be processed water that would then be discharged into the sea. We've had lots of occurrences of untreated raw sewage going into the, into the, into the sea, not just in our area, across the rest of the country. And there are, there's an exemption process that the water authorities have to demonstrate to it to enable to, them to do that. Um, so we're not we're not authorizing Angley Water to discharge raw sewage from this scheme into the into the sea. There's other legislation that, that um, legislates against that. So it, it shouldn't be a normality. It should be an exception. That's that's obviously something that's being considered nationally at the moment. Uh, I know it's of national concern, but it, it's not a reason to refuse this application or fears of something that's legislated elsewhere would be my advice to, to the committee. Okay. Um, Mr. Barbuck, if I might ask you, with regard to the tarmac sections, is this permeable tarmac really permeable? It's been brought up, yes, you may. So 
Thank you. Victoria, you want to come back? I was thinking more in terms of light pollution rather than solar gain. Light in terms pollution. of glazing. I think yeah. because, it, again, it was mentioned in here that because they're low-lying, one-storey um, buildings and because of the hedging and trees around, that the uh, light pollution isn't considered to be that, isn't considered, or it's been considered but hasn't been thought to be uh, a problem. Is that right, Jeff? Yes, I know, I know the landscape officer will have picked up on those sort of issues because light spill is, is obviously something that's an issue across large parts of our district. Um, yeah, but being single story, obviously the impact will be far less. I haven't seen any roof lights proposed in, in the dwellings. They, they can often be um, sources yeah. of light sort of pointing upwards. So, um, so if, if the committee want to have a condition to finalise the detail of the glazing, I'm sure that could be put in there. I, I think the applicant has said that's not something that he would be opposed to if we just want to clarify exactly what the glazing would look like if that would i think um, yes i can see some nods i think we might add that on in. okay okay thanks a lot uh councillor lloyd thank you chair the principle of this uh, application has already been established so we're really looking at the fine detail as i see it today um Personally, I'm pleased that the applicant came back and, and provided a landscaping scheme. Um, and the only other thing I'd like to say is, and I've said it many times in this committee for many years, is that I happen to know that this development um, is being built beyond the current building standards in terms of um, environmental standards and but it's not included in the report. Other members wouldn't know that. And I'm disappointed again. And I think it should be um, included in section three of, of all future planning applications that might be considered to be marginal, but the fact that uh, there'll be very minimal environmental impact um, is, is, a, is a matter for consideration for this committee. Um, and I'm disappointed that it still isn't mentioned, doesn't even get a, a, a you know, climate change doesn't even get a, a look in on these reports often. So, yeah, but having said all that, I'm prepared to second the application. Thank you, Councillor Lloyd. Thank you. I agree with you. I think obviously climate change is becoming an extremely important factor here. And all new buildings, I think, are now being strongly considered for their, um, yes, for their climate um, proposals. Heat source pumps, etc. Solar panels, etc. <laughs> Andrew, I haven't gone through the list yet, my love. So can you wait a moment? Add you to what? Mm, okay. That's a picture. Kill it. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. Most of the things that I was going to raise have been covered. Um, just a point that's sort of a little bit off the curve. Um, we at Coastal are working very hard with Anglian Water in respect of the monthly treatment section because that falls within our coast protection scheme. And I can confirm that um, they do take the sewage from the village of Trunch, amongst many others. Uh, one of the points I did want to raise is surface water runoff, and I'm very glad that we are insisting on permeable surfaces. Um, but of course, that is not Anglian Water's fault. Surface water drainage comes under the Lead Local Flood Authority, which of course is Norfolk County Council. And the sooner that they invest trillions to separate surface water runoff from sewage, then we will stop all the outfalls going into the ocean. Yes, I totally agree with you. Um, and unfortunately, it's still being allowed. Uh, but there we go. Um, Councillor Toy. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, OK, yeah, uh, Councillor Lloyd said a, a, an awful lot of, of what I wanted to say, and I absolutely agree with him that we should have this in the reports going forward. It would be really useful. However, re reading the design access statement, it says um, that it, uh, it's an intention to make the development carbon neutral. 
um, by using low carbon sustainable construction products. Is there any checks that go on through building control that we know that they have been used, that that does happen? And also uh, following on from that, just as an encouragement to the developer, it says that it will be uh, it, uh, provision will be made for the future addition of micro generation from PVs, et cetera. Why not fit them? Rather than being carbon neutral, let's be carbon, I'll never get this the right way, negative or whatever, that, that it's actually benefiting. Um, so uh, that's just a word of encouragement to the developer that we could go further than just trying to be neutral. But I would like to know how we ensure that we do use these sustainable products. And if I could just add um, about the highways issue, what they use on motorways is, is permeable and that takes an awful lot of water when it falls down and it gets it off the road, so traffic and travel. So actually it is very permeable as a, as a tarmac. So if that's helpful. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Jeff, you anything to say on me? I don't know if I can answer the question on building control um, matters in terms, of whether, in terms of how they do their inspection regime. I mean, clearly from the planning perspective, we have, and it will have an agreed set of plans or agreed condition discharges, and the applicant will need to comply with those conditions and plans. So provided they're doing that, then from the planning perspective, they've met their planning obligations. Um, but I, I, so I don't have an answer today in terms of how the building control will enforce um, measures in the building control application. I mean, it, you sometimes get a disparity between what's in a building regulation submission and what's in a planning submissions, but I'm, I'm sure that wouldn't be the case here. It'd be uh, making sure that things are followed through. But so I can I can certainly ask the building control manager to to to, to provide me with some answers, and we can, I can report that at another meeting if that helps. Thank you. Could I just come back, Madam Chair, briefly? Yes. Yeah, just briefly to say that um, I'm not for one minute saying the developer is not fully intentioned to do that, but we know that what can happen is is a plan comes forward, it's designed by someone, the developer, goes to a builder who subcontracts. We don't know that these products are getting there at the end of the line, and I'd like to know if there's some sort of audit trail. So if Jeff can report back to us, I'd be happy with that. Thank you. I think there is. Um, I mean, as far as I'm aware, that the building control uh, inspector goes along at some point to check the footings and, and etc but how many times they go to the to the one property i'm not sure so we will yes mr barback would like to just say something. So you're saying there'll be no subcontracting? Can you definitely say that? <laughs> okay, I, fine. I, I think for clarity, though, Madam Chair, sorry to interrupt, but um, that that we need to understand. We're going to put this in reports. We need to understand that that audit trail going forward. Not for this application. I'm not questioning yeah. the applicant here. That I, I think we should at least know that if it's a process already in place, then that's fine. But I'd like okay. to know. Thank you. I think the subcontracting normally appears in occurs in larger developments where they subcontract to subcontractors who subcontract to further subcontractors. So that's where we get hmm? Yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting debate. I just need to make sure members we're not taking down a route that goes outside of the planning sphere because obviously there's, there's certain things we've got control of and other things that we don't as a planning committee. So just, just make sure we're focusing on what we can control. Um, I mean, there are, there, there are useful points to take away in terms of how we ensure people deliver on their sort of promises made during the planning process and that's why we need to secure those by conditions or legal agreements and that's the purpose of that to secure those um, and I think we've got quite a number of conditions here that will hopefully deliver what the applicant is promising for this development. I think Fiona's uh, just pointed out within the recommendations the conditions condition three materials so we have quite a um, um, an input there which we can can be discussed with the with uh, Jane. Um, Andrew, you want to, you want to come back? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, just very briefly through you, Chair, if I can ask Mr. Barber, there's just a couple of um, concerns that local residents had, neighbours had. One was the repositioning of, I think, um, a, a telegraph pole or some kind of infrastructure um, as to where that would be repositioned uh, if it, in fact, it is to be repositioned. 
Um, I, I wasn't quite clear on that. And the other thing was um, a point raised about uh, a fence, I think along the eastern boundary to the rear of the property to mitigate um, um, interference with neighbouring property through vehicles uh, leaving and entering the site, particularly at night time. Uh, it's just, I'm just asking if those two concerns have been addressed because I don't think um, the spokesperson from the parish council mentioned them. I thought they were in the report, the fencing. Hang on a minute. <laughs> It's difficult when you're using written report, isn't it? So there's quite there's quite a lot in section four on the landscaping, um, and that's part. Oh, there's quite a significant landscaping scheme that goes with that. Um, in terms of boundary treatments, again, I mean that's something we could. Uh, if the applicants are agreeable to have a sort of boundary treatment scheme agreed if that's um, we often have that where we obviously we prefer not to see sort of concrete post and timber board fencing because that can have quite an urbanizing effect so if, if we can work to a, a boundary scheme that softens its impact or visual impact on the setting then the applicant is sort of able to provide any comfort to the members on that maybe possible chair. to have a birth chair Let's we'll just ask Mr. Barbic. Thank you. Um, and um, Councillor Mancini Boyle. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I won't be long to sort of drag down a bit this one. Um, I agree with everybody. All, all the points that have been raised are points that we're all very concerned about, especially with climate change. And I suppose what's, what's coming out of all of this is we need a little bit more information on our um, agendas, really, because as you alluded to, Madam Chair, that you know I keep banging on about heat source pumps and got solar panels. Like My hair was black the last time I mentioned it. So um, it'd be nice to see more of that on the reports. And more. And, and as, as the gentleman has, has said, he's, he's gone beyond building, building regulations. So it'd be nice to see that on there as well. Uh, because it, 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 it's a bit of a disadvantage at the moment that we're not seeing all this information. We have to ask for it. I'd like to see it on the report because at the, at the moment I'm looking at this report and it seems slightly disadvantaged to, to the uh, uh, person who's got the application. So the more information we can get on here, the better it would be to make our judgment more clear. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, over to you, Jeff. I'm, I'm absorb absorbing all the suggestions on, on how we can improve the re reports. Um, we are looking at our local validation list anyway, in terms of the information that we require applicants to provide up front. And I think having something where there's a statement on how this, how their proposal responds positively to a climate emergency would be something that I would certainly be helpful for us, because then we can weigh that in the balance. And actually, if someone's going above and beyond, we could give that positive weight in your decision making. So I think having something like that would certainly help us, and I would certainly be happy to I mean, I, I do. I have mentioned quite a number of times to my officers about including climate um, responses in, in in officer reports. Um, we'll make sure that's covered in future reports. Is that okay, John? 
Nigel, do you want to come? Yep, just something yes. just happened very, this happened here, but I think it's going to happen elsewhere. We're dealing with a, an application that has outline approval from back when. Local plans have come in and changed the perspective. So we find ourselves agreeing something that is contrary to an awful lot of policies. Um, we've taken a decision. Um, I just think, would it not be better still to Jeff that when we say we've got an outline planning permission, can we now have the date that when it was given? Because I think that is re relevant because we're going to come up against this more and more. I think people. it is given, Nigel. Uh, the, the outline planning commission was. Yeah. Yes, and I apologise, Madam Chairman. Bottom of page one, page thirteen. And I apologise. I've got temporary blindness. Okay, fair enough. I do apologise. Okay. But uh, it's something we've got to look at because it does fly, obviously, in, in the situation of uh, future plans and applications. That's all. Apart from that, I could see both sides, and I do think I have to say that the um, position of uh, the local parish council was fully justified. Thank you. Um, anybody else wish to speak before we... Um, you lost Chroma, by the way. I've, um, <laughs> I've listened very carefully. I'd like to thank the officers on an excellent report. Um, all the uh, boxes have been ticked on this, but uh, I'd like to emphasise uh, the fact that it, it's of vital importance that uh, the conditions are met on this application. Um, I'd like to hark back to what Nigel said. It's not important. It's of vital importance what Nigel said. It's it, it's a it's a very important topic, and I think that should be covered. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think for as long as these conditions are met, I can't see a problem. Thank you, Andy. Well, it certainly would be because we seem to be adding will you yes, really? abundance of <laughs> conditions. Uh... We're going to have a summary of the conditions now. <laughs> okay. This is a test of my linguistic problem. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've scribbling quite really well. well. So <laughs> yes, it is recorded. That is true. All right. So we've got the list of conditions at the, so the bottom of the uh, of the report. So there's eight conditions there. There's two additional conditions I mentioned when I was in the presentation. One about securing confirmation that it's not going to a treatment works that discharges into the broad catchment. Another condition securing details of surface water drainage. A condition on securing information about how driveway surfacing is to be provided to make sure it's permeable, permeable um, surfaces. Condition to secure a glazing scheme for the site so we don't have any light spill, and also a condition on boundary treatments to be to be agreed. And I think that was it. Yes, I think that sounds. Oh, Victoria wants to say. Something. Could we add another one on external lighting? Was that Sorry. could we add another one on external lighting? Was restricting external lighting for these? We have given the density of the. Did you put that in? Is that not in? Uh, it probably isn't in there. There's, we can add a condition that says that uh, lighting shall be installed installed in accordance with the green scheme or something like that. We we do that often, and particularly in the A and B, where yeah. we want to make sure we're happy with what's going in. And they were. I think actually it should be one of our sort of standard conditions, really, because it's important. Uh, no, no, because it it can be very disturbing to have exterior lighting on all the time. Even the ones which are movement um, activated can be quite disturbing. Right, have we all had our say now? I think we've practically gone through the whole of the committee. Um, so we're, we've had a, a proposal from Councillor Heinrich to approve uh, this application. Um, and the recommendation from the officers is to approve it with conditions as have been set out on page 19 and 20 with the additions. Yes, I'm coming to that. That's okay. <laughs> so we've had the proposal from Councillor Heinrich and the second from Councillor Lloyd. So can we please go to the vote? All those who approve this application, are we going to, you're going to read out? Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Fantastic. Uh, so Councillor Brown. For. Councillor Fisher. For. Councillor Fitch Tillett. Four. Councillor Grove Jones. Four. Councillor Heinrich. Four. Councillor Holiday. Councillor Kershaw. Four. Councillor Lloyd. Councillor Mancini Boyle. 
Councillor Pearce, Councillor Taylor, Councillor Toy, four. Councillor Withington, four, and Councillor Yusimi. That is unanimous, that is 14 votes for. Mr. Barbic, you have your approval. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. You can you can stay if you want to, or you can Well, I, I think what, what we what we're um, saying is that in the past, um, with the feasibility studies that were taken, you know that uh, developers would agree to a whole tranche of conditions and then once they got their approval they'd start to look at it and say golly this isn't going to be viable and things were knocked off quite a lot of the time which were conditions that we look at now and say are extremely important like solar panels like having um gray water uses uh having water butts and such like and they used they just disappeared but I think in time, this will then become mandatory. Anyway, we now go on to our second um, item. This is on page 21, Almerton, Pier stroke 22 stroke 1298. Um, and we have no town or parish speaker. No, I'm just going to say this quickly. No objectors, no supporters. And the local member, no, he hasn't arrived. He's not unwell. Anna, do you want to speak to this? Good morning. Um, this application is uh, retrospective in nature, uh, seeking to retain the, the existing installation of 28 ground mounted solar panels on land to the west, northwest of Elmerton. Um, this application has been called in for your consideration for the reason set on page 21. Um, and that is that the applicant is a member of staff working in the property services team. Uh, the main issue in this case relates to the landscape impact this proposal may have on the North Norfolk area of outstanding natural beauty. And this is discussed on page 23 of the agenda. This proposal is located to the northwest side of Elmerton and within the, um, the North Norfolk area of outstanding natural beauty where development proposals can be granted per, uh, permission if no adverse impacts of doing so would significantly and evidently outweigh the benefits when assessed against the core strat, um, strategy policies. And now we'll go through the presentation slide one. Um, in terms of location, Raw Farm is located, as I said, northwest of Elmerton, set back from Holt Road, along a small linear cluster of properties with agricultural uh, land and fields located at the rear of these developments. Uh, as you can see on this plan, the host well is located within a large plot of land divided between the residential part and the agricultural um, land. Next slide. Um, as you can see from this, from the aerial image, the host um, dwelling rural farm is located between Blythe and Wright Company uh, to the east and Meadow Cottage to the, to the west side. Uh, the development itself is located to the rear of Blythe and Wright Company side. Um, yeah. Next slide. Um, this is a site location map, which is a similar version 
of the previous slide showing the relationship of the application site in relation to the neighboring properties. Okay, on this slide, as we, we as uh, on this slide, we have four photos looking towards the development side. There are 28 uh, solar panels that have already been installed onto uh, agricultural land belonging belonging to the applicant, um, located near the neighboring boundary, uh, but at a considerable distance away from the neighboring dwelling. Um, this development is made up of two rows of solar panels placed very low to the ground, obscured from view by neighboring outbuilding belonging to Blythe and Wright Company. The area in, in which these solar panels have been installed constitutes a predominantly grassed area screened by outbuildings. Oh, yeah. Um, grassed area screened by outbuildings and hedgerows and cannot. Um, be seen from the public highway. The design is acceptable with no adverse impact upon the neighboring dwellings, nor upon the surrounding landscape or uh, special qualities of the A and B. Next slide. Uh, the installation, as you can see, is freestanding, placed on um, Renosol ground mounted, um, which are freestanding unit system with an overall height of about um, 3.5 centimeters uh, from the from the ground, covering an area of 56 square um, meters. The solar panels benefit from anti-reflective coating to maximize uh, light transmission and limit solar glare. And the system is connected directly to the grid through a single uh, phase input photovoltaic system, providing enough electricity to power a raw farm. The installation should generate about eight kilowatt peak power of electrical output annually. Next slide. As you can see, the key, the key issues um, relating to this application are, um, I think the main, the most important one is the area of outstanding uh, natural beauty um, and the impact that this development might have. Um, on the recommendation, yeah, the recommendation is for approval subject to conditions set out on page 23 of the agenda. Um, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you, Chair. As I said, we don't have any body wishing to speak and the local member is Councillor Kutikova, who is unwell at the moment. So, uh, have we anybody who wishes to say anything about this? Councillor Holiday, and then Councillor Mancini Boyle. Just let me put these down so I don't. Councillor Fitz Chillet. Oh, goodness me, we're going through the whole. <laughs> Councillor Brown, Councillor Heinrich. You're not going to put your hand up, Nigel. <laughs> right, Victoria, you're first, please. Thank you. I've got a question and an observation. Very good report, Anna. Thank you very much. Very nicely presented. Um, question about the anti-reflective coating and the actual amount of um, solar glare that's limited. I don't know if that can be quantitated. So that's a question. And the observation is we have a very beautiful document called the Landscape Sensitivity Assessment. That's 309 pages, um, which um, I don't know, perhaps in future when we're talking about solar panels in the AONB, we could refer to because there's quite a lot of detail there about how um, the AONB is highly sensitive when it comes to photo solar panels. And in fact, if you look at the tributary farmland, which I think this come, area comes under, um, a small scale solar PV has an impact that's moderately high to high. So um, it may be that this this particular development is so small as to not impact the AOMB. But I think in future, when talking about the AOMB, we need to refer back to this document and um, all the very good content that it has, and really be cognizant of the fact that these do have that these developments are going to have a huge impact on the AOMB. Thank you. Thank you. Anna, have you anything to say on that one? Um, 
So when I, I contacted the client and asked more questions about the solar panels, that is the information that he gave me. But that's it. It's it stopped there. So I kind of accepted. I agreed with it, and I put it into the into my report. But if if you'd like me to ask the client um, extra questions with regards to this, to the to the solar panels themselves and what they do and what, how they are quote quote coated, you know, they are covered with. Sorry, um, I can I can go back to the client to the applicant and ask any questions if. Um, Jeff wants to say something. Yeah, I mean, having dealt with quite a few big solar farms, obviously, reflective issues are obviously quite an important issue. And and reflecting light, if they if it does reflect light, it reduces its efficiency. So it's in the interest of the developer not to have a, a scheme that reflects light back because they lose efficiency of the, of the solar panels. So that's why they have this reflective, uh, this anti glare coating on there. So they do get everything that they need from the sunlight to to, to generate the electricity. Um, I mean, in terms of the report, I mean, obviously this is quite a small scale scheme by comparison to others we've seen across our district. So it's a fine balance. We, we can we can sort of bore, we, bore you as members with, with long reports about stuff that might be useful, but might not necessarily hugely relevant when making your decision. So it's a, sometimes a fine balance in terms of how much detail we go into. But yeah, the points, the points noted about the documents that we have in terms of the, the sensitivity studies. So we can take that away. But in terms of this, this this permission i think we've got enough before us to make a decision as a committee okay the time thank you um gerard uh thank you madam chair my mind's a, a very normal question that i ask um <clears throat> when i saw this application i had a quick look online to see how um recyclable solar panels are uh, um, i'm hoping these are going to be the latest technology and the most efficient to be recycled do you have any no don't, don't worry. I'm sure they are, but it, the, the problem is the old ones used to be really bad. They used to have silicons and acids of all sorts and zinc. And I know these are a lot better. I'm just hoping they've got the, the latest technology. So um, I'm not asking you to do, do a report back to me, but I'm just hoping they are more recyclable and l l last longer than, um, you know, I'm just, just, I just hope they use the latest technology. That's all, really. Thank Gerard, you. I think we just have to point out this is retrospective. They're already there. So, um, you know, it's very little we can do unless we say pull them up and put the newest in, but we have to take it as, as it is. Okay. But I, I understand what you're saying about solar panels in future, and they have, in, they have improved tremendously and will continue to do so and get smaller, I think, as well, and less heavy because that was one of the biggest. Yeah, yeah. It will. Thank you. Um, Angie. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I'm glad Victoria, sorry, Council Holiday has raised a bit about the AOMB because as this Council's representative and the Vice Chairman of the Partnership, it's the first thing I zoomed in on. Um, and it's quite clear on, on page 23 um, that there is there's no compliance of the requirement policy CM12 and they don't see it as a problem. And just to reassure Council Holiday and other members of the committee, um, if there is a planning application within the AOMB, Norfolk Coast Partnership have their own planners and they do check nearly every single one. Um, they are not, um, they are just a consultee, but they uh, will definitely shout out if they're not happy with something. So. As my team are happy, I'm happy. Thank you. Um, Councillor Brown, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll come to you, Andy, in, in a bit. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, welcome, Anna, to the Planning Committee, and thank you for your very well-presented inaugural report to, yeah, to the yeah. committee. Um, I, I want to support this, Chair. Uh, You're so proposing? I, I would propose that we accept the officer's recommendation. Um, it's obviously important in these particular times that we're all aware of that solar panels create um, electricity that can be fed back into, into the grid. Um, so that is extremely useful. 
uh, for, for all of us, not just for the, the applicants' uh, economy, as it were, in providing energy for themselves. Um, it obviously uh, chimes with our corporate plan. It chimes with the fact that we are climate change declaration um, emergency uh, council. Um, not everybody in Norfolk is, but we are. I'm pleased to say, so I have no hesitation in supporting this uh, application, Chair. Thank you. Um, I was going to say something then about what you were saying. It's gone completely from my mind. Um, <laughs> Councillor Heinrich. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, if these were on a on the barn roof, that wouldn't even be before us, uh, I suspect. Small scale solar array is out of the way. It's providing useful energy for that site. We really ought to be encouraging these smaller scale developments. They're far less obtrusive than these vast farms that we've got, uh, for example, around uh, the old Cottrell Air Base and uh, near Worcester. You know, small, small scale is, is the future. It's a pity the government doesn't recognise that and start providing appropriate grants. I so, agree with you there, Paul. Um, I, so, I have to say that, uh, interrupting you for a minute, in the paper on Saturday, and I'm sure you read it, Andrew, they were saying, you've got to smile that this particular um, solar panel display will feed back into the into the farm, but the um, the provision of energy being fed back into the grid has is there, but the amount of money being paid to to the solar panel owners is going down and down and down. I just find it quite extraordinary with governments, you know, they propose one thing and say we need more and more energy um, support and proposals. And then at the end of it, they say, but we're not going to pay you so much for it. So there we are. Yes, Paul, I'd interrupted you. I do apologise. Yeah, I, I was, just go I was going out. to finish anyway, <laughs> Jim, and say um, I will second the proposal. <laughs> Andy, and then you want to speak, John? And then, no. Andy. Um, I've uh, I've got nothing to say now because all my questions have been answered uh, by the time it got round to me. Thank you, Angie. That that was very useful to know, and uh, excellent report, Anna. Um, I have no problems with this application. Um, happy with the anti glare stuff and uh, in the. Uh, grand scale of the uh, of things of where it is i have no problem with it whatsoever good um yes john thank you madam chair uh, very briefly um it's about three miles from where i live i often walk past there day and night winter summer and i wasn't even aware they were there so in terms of their impact on the aomb if that gives people comfort th th there is no impact they, they sit so low i was not aware till this application came in and if we don't carry on building these sort of schemes, as people have already said, there will be no AOMB. It will be a dry part of wasteland. So um, we, we need to make sure that they do fit in, and this one does, and I, I, I will be going with this. Thank you. Um, Peter. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, John has already said that uh, these uh, small panels are not seen um, easily and in fact there is a footpath which runs from the church which is south of the a148 uh just to the east of row farm which i walk quite often and was unaware that they were there so i think that's not a, a problem and i would also like to compliment anna who has wooed my next door neighbor who's an architect who was quite withering about the planning uh at this authority and as though been calmed. Thank you. Um, can I just also mention, as we're talking about climate change and uh, renewable energy, etc., there is a proposal to start from the government to start backing onshore wind farms again. So, uh, so well, there we go, Angie. So, hmm? Oh, it may change on us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it's something. To, it's something to take on board because this was. This was. We have always, in the past, looked at these very, very warily because of the impact 
on the AONB and on the SSSIs. Hmm? <laughs> Not quite the same <laughs> structures. These are getting bigger and bigger, apparently. Where's that? That's 42. 42. We're distracting. Well, you know, now and again. Come along now. All right, so we have a proposal to accept the recommendation to approve this uh, um, Almaton panels. Uh, proposer is Councillor Brown, seconded by Councillor Heinrich. So this is for acceptance. If we could pass to Lauren, read out. Yep. Councillor Brown. For. Councillor Fisher. For. Councillor Fitch Tillett. For. Councillor Grave Jones. For. Councillor Heinrich. For. Councillor Holiday. Councillor Kershaw. For. Councillor Lloyd. Councillor Mancini Boyle. For. Councillor Pierce. For. Councillor Taylor. Councillor Val, oh, Toy. Oh. Councillor Wimmington. Oh. And Councillor Yusimi. That is unanimous, vote, 14 votes for. Right, that's been passed. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's got to go. It's got Dr. Snowden. It's over to you, Mara. Light touch, what I like. I like a light touch. <clears throat> right, we now go to page 25, Development Management Performance Update. Jeff. Right, just a very quick um, quick update on performance in, in the department. So I've kind of set out on page 25 a table of the performance for majors and non-majors in terms of decisions. So and that's, this is for the period up to the 31st of July. So we've got one major decision and 101 non-major decisions. So in terms of performance, we're doing reasonably well now. We've got to say continue to have 100 percent on the majors um, decisions. So we're up to 90 over 96 percent now for non-majors decided on time. And then and that sort of impacts on our 24 month uh, rolling average that's creeping up now. It's 87.5 percent for majors and um 86.64 percent for, for non-majors. So yeah, we the, the trend is is, is on, a, on, a, on an upwards trend now, which is good. Um we've sort of cleared quite a number of older cases there's still a number of cases to to clear but so we're working through that backlog um also neutral neutrality has impacted some schemes and they we're getting extensions of time agreed for those sorts of sorts of schemes um but yeah so it's, it's pretty positive um i mean there are some we've had some we do have some pressures in terms of staffing pressures so we've lost a couple of members of, of the team um so, so that will have an impact in terms of workloads moving from there caseload to other people so yeah but that could that could impact us going forward but in terms of our, our report so far it's 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 pretty good so i'm pretty pleased on that um so i don't know if any members have any questions on performance before i move into section 106 oh. obligation guess who andrew <laughs> well in my capacity as portfolio holder chair Absolutely. it would be remiss of me not to make uh, some comment uh, just to say uh jeff uh, thank you for the performance of the department um uh, you know working through the challenges of nutrient neutrality and pressures on staff changes which to a certain extent are outside the uh, control of the of the department um and i hope that the non-majors can match the performance of the majors a seven percent gap i think that's probably the objective moving forward let's see if we can get them on parity um uh, but uh, thank you very much for the work that you're doing and your colleagues in the department i'll pass on my greatness to the to the, to the team because it's they're the people that are working really hard so uh, thank you i think we can all uh, echo that as well we did last month and we are again this month it's uh it's not only uh the fact of liaising with the applicants but it's also writing the reports and getting it correct the information correct right on to number two then please 
Okay, so here I've just sort of summarised the position we are with Section 106 obligations. Um, so yeah, we're again, we're in a pretty healthy position. You can see the table on um, on page 27. So just highlights where we're at. And I mean, Fiona may want to update here, but I think there's three agreements um, that are very close to being issued. And the ones in grey, ones that are on hold at the moment where we can't take it any further forward. So we're, we're down to almost two, two obligations. So yeah, we're again in a pretty healthy position now. Fiona, do you want to say anything on this? Um, yep, CMARJ is completed now, and the West Rainham um, Section 106 agreements are out for signature. So I'm trying to move quickly. Thank you. And thank you, Fiona, for all your all your work on this. It's you all the way down, and it's not easy. As well as the officers, it's uh, you can indeed. A little thing in my left ear is talking to me. Yeah. So just on the Section 106 obligations, where we where we get applicants who don't play ball, so, so to speak, and who take too long, obviously we've got the clause in the in the decision notices where we'll bring it back to the committee if if, if things do, do not progress. So I think there's probably one of those on the list here that might be in that sort of category. Um, we'll need to consider whether to bring it back to you at some stage. Um, but obviously we need to keep on to applicants to make sure they're moving forward otherwise we have applications are sitting there and not progressing so um, you're going to mention that one or we just keep that quiet just to see when it comes back at some point uh, i think you probably guess where it is it's a red one on the list it's um <laughs> dear oh dear yes um, and don't talk about solar panels <laughs> Right, so we're asked to note the contents of this report, okay? Then on to page 29, um, the appeals sections, please. I suppose it would be remiss of me not to mention something that's going on in Cly area. Goodness me, I can't think what it can be. <laughs> oh. So, I mean, that case is obviously long, long running. I think we have a, a date in January now for the for the for the hearing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so yeah. So that's that's. They say that case has been long running. I think I think I said probably too much last time at the, at the committee in terms of frustrations with, with how that's sort of going going around, but so. Yeah, clearly we're not going to want to, to pursue beyond that date because the longer it goes on, it just feels like it's the can's being kicked down the road and it may be in the applicant's interest to, to keep that can moving along. Um, but we need to make a decision, not just for this site, but just to, so people know where they stand locally because it's obviously of interest locally. And people want to know, is it going to stay there or is it going to be asked to be... Uh, Remediated. <laughs> that's, a word. that's a nice word. Is that remediated? <laughs> it's interesting, though, isn't it, that that we have um, a six-month turnaround basically for applications, and uh, but some extensions are given. But with regard to the inspectors, um, there seems to be nothing to stop and keep keep delaying. Well, there is something called the planning guarantee which we we have to we have to well i mean we are supposed to make decisions within 26 weeks of the date of decision or unless the applicant has agreed an extension of time otherwise they can ask for their money back and i think the similar rules apply to the inspectorate because government we're trying to say well we we think you should have a decision within a year of submitting your application so six months for the local authority to make a decision and six months for an appeal if if you get a refusal Clearly, inspectors have have re recruitment issues at the moment, just like many of our planning authorities have in terms of difficulties finding experienced planners. But so we we have to abide by the guarantee, even though we're uh, struggling with resources. But it, it seems the punishment doesn't seem to apply to to the planning inspector. But yeah. frustrations for everybody involved. I think. Absolutely. Anything else on the um, written represent in hand? I'm, I'm happy to take any questions on. On appeals, I won't necessarily go through line by line. So, if anybody has yeah. any particular, did you want to say anything about the Kelling appeal? Yeah. What can I say? Other than that, we're still waiting for a decision. We've been waiting for a long okay. time. We've been asking the, the inspector when will we get a decision, because that is a fundamental 
case for our five year land supply position as a planning authority because that was a key tenant of a discussion in, in, in the informal hearing. So, I mean, in some ways, it's, it's good not to get the decision because we don't get a, a, a formal position on our five year land supply. But we know we, we know with neutral neutrality, it's, it's coming under increasing pressure and um, it's only a matter of time. But it's, we, we need to have this official view from the inspectorate because at least then we've got something that we can um, rely on as a, as a decision on our, on our sort of position on that. Um, the Roughton pub, Nigel, is that within your area? Um, we were discussing this at pre-planning. Um, we couldn't quite work out where the new car park's going to be because the car park that exists at the moment, they've applied to build houses on, two houses. So where is the other car park? Paul and, and I couldn't work this one out at all. Do apologise, learned members. Uh, I'll start again. I understand your uh, concern, Madam Chairman. It is a bit confusing in there. I um, did put my remarks against the application. I think it's ill thought out, but obviously you can see why they've appealed. It's a bit of a mess um, and it is in danger in my mind um, of becoming a, an urbanised uh, commercial corner you've got the garage fish and chip shop and everything else and yet behind there you've got residents um who want the quiet and want to be left alone to get on with their life it's a very complex one and uh, i am keeping my eye on it and obviously i would like to have a chat with jeff or somebody not too distant future to find out exactly what's going on but uh, i have waited till i think a more appropriate time um to find out what's going on but uh, I can't give you any more at the moment, and that's not because I don't want to. It's just been very hard to get hold of. Okay. Um, Victoria. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to re-register the concerns of the community about their delays in the Cly appeal. And also, Jeff, hasn't the Blakeney, um, uh, the pastures appeal, been withdrawn or not accepted by the inspectorate? Because we it was it was out of time, I think. Well, we've we've been working on the assumption that it has been registered by the inspectorate because they've um, sent us the appeal statements and asked for, for submissions from ourselves. So we're working on the basis that it is a live appeal, unless we're told otherwise by the planning inspectorate. We're, we're reliant on our officer report, so we've made our submissions to the inspector, so they've they've got our position. So if they, if they okay, right on to the last station. Um, anything of nothing remains trunched after appeal decisions. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Peter. I'm ignoring you. I do apologize. Not, not intentionally. I like to surprise you every now and again, madam. You do, cheeky thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, Jeff. Uh, Wales, I was just uh, inquiring about how that's going on. That seems to be on our uh papers for two or three occasions, but I wondered if there was any movement on that. And also on um, North Walsham appeal decisions, appeal allowed with conditions. I wondered what the conditions were. Yes, this was one that we did bring up at the In terms of the Wells decision, I haven't heard anything more from the enforcement team to know where we're at. So I'm, I'm assuming it's still an, an exchange of, of written submission written statements on that because it's a written reps appeal so it's not one where we have to do statements of case um, i can get the enforcement officer to update you speak on that. Right. now we'll be one second and i'll just get an answer to the other one that's the one we discussed the north portion which has been allowed with conditions talk about your sales for a moment Are we going to get any rain at the weekend? That's the big question. I don't know. Chair, just whilst we're waiting, can I just, just endorse what Jeff has said about the planning inspector? It's something that's not covered in the media very much. Um, so I don't think our residents appreciate what pressure it puts on 
this planning authority, uh, the delays that we have to experience, and also on the enforcement team, we have to monitor these sites while pending the the, the outcome. So um, I would just hope that that can be that can be limited. Yep. This North Warsham um, of Heal, we discussed this because Paul always pulls North Warsham. And I go past it every day, and I couldn't. Yeah, and I couldn't see any problem with it, to be honest with you. But yeah. Well, I mean, no, no, and and I think we said it could be a. A highways problem you know it was blocking views etc but it doesn't seem to be so um, i'll have a good look when i go past today because i go past it every time i go up and down and it hasn't really hasn't impinged on my no no right okay we have an answer i have found the inspector's decision I was, I was expecting some wonderful additional conditions on there, but basically the inspectors just imposed the standard five advert conditions about keeping the sign clean and all that sort of stuff. So, it's, so it's not, there's nothing newfangled in there. It's it's just a standard affair you would get with an advert consent. So, um, yeah, as you were, basically. <laughs> it's good to see that we had two appeals dismissed. Um, not good for the people who put them forward, but it shows that we're doing our job properly, that with, when we object, um, the the inspector has has um, endorsed our objections so now we then go to finish off um no exclusion of press and public as they're not here no private business lauren no uh no exempt matters so the committee closes at four minutes three minutes <laughs>